Hello everyone and welcome, yes my name is Arafire and welcome back to another episode of Lookout and Shout. Where today we're back on the Fans Toys train because we are reviewing FT42 Hunk, their version of a masterpiece, Brawn. Now, this is a 2023 release so I'm actually reviewing a new figure for a change. This is one I was never that keen on to pick up because I wasn't that big a fan of Brawn back in the day. Wasn't a big fan of his original toy because it looked nothing like him from the cartoon. We know the history as to why with pre-Transformers releases. And so when this came out, I thought, eh, do I really care? But seeing some in-hand images, I thought it does look quite good. So I picked this up from, of course, Primetime Toys, which you can go and visit on the link below, straight to their website, and you can use a couple of codes. If it's your first order, you can use the code WELCOME10, but there's also another code of POWERUP10 to get 10% off your order. I picked this up in a Black Friday sale, which I think a lot of people did because it quickly went sold out on their website, but do keep checking. I'm sure they'll have some more stock in very soon. Inside the box, the figure, and you just get a couple of accessories. You get his gun, and you get a drill bit as well, which is for the alt mode, which we will go into in a minute. Other accessories include his collector's card, which is a few nines and tens in language that I cannot read. So I'm guessing it's courage and strength because he does have a mighty mouse persona, as well as the instructions. The instructions are so-so. They're not too bad, but there's a couple of bits that don't actually match up to the picture. They're relating to the picture before. So that's a sign to be wary of. Okay, let's have a look at this mighty figure himself, shall we? And here he is in his robot mode. Now, I will say straight away, he does not come with an Autobot insignia. I put that on myself. And the face he comes with, fresh out of the box, is a more placid face. This is the shouty face that I put on because I think this looks better. And this has been on my shelf for a few weeks now. I do think that is a very toon accurate brawn. And I think that looks fantastic. I will say two toon is normally a problem. I think is such a problem that it affects the build of a figure to make it look so accurate from screen that it's jumping out at you that this i think is just the right balance of it this is just enough to be so incredibly too accurate without compromising the build of the figure the proportions of the figure okay you could argue maybe he's a bit big around the, the feet he does look a quite stocky build around there but to get him in hand, he's very weighty. He has a Mighty Mouse kind of feel to him, which I think really sums up the character very, very well. This is what fans toys do really well. They capture the build, the die cast, the paint, and they get that great face sculpt. I don't think I've seen one bad face sculpt on a more modern day fans toys figures. Maybe some of the earlier ones like Tesla 1.0, for example. But their releases for a few years now their face sculpts have been on point. This is no exception. He looks brilliant. Let's get in for a closer look. And straight away, if I pick him up, you can see just that expression on the face is brilliant. That's exactly what is needed. Fans toys are guilty of doing very small shoulders and upper arms, and they do look slender. But I suppose with him being a mini bot, it comes off fine. I do love the yellow used on the chest. It's a very orange, much more than yellow. Camera, I don't think, shows it as well. And there you have... It's just really good denseness. Everything of him is die-cast. I almost hardly... Maybe other than his backpack, it's almost all die-cast. He's fairly weighty, fairly heavy. But articulation-wise, friction out, so no ratchets on the shoulder. Bicep rotation, single bend at the elbow. Wrist rotation that's a tiny bit tight. And you get far and you get finger opening, but it's more of a wrist clasp, it's not individual articulated fingers. No hip rotation, which is a shame, but I suppose when that backpack is hanging off him, what can you do? Leg rotation. Again, no ratchets on the legs. Get a bit of leg rotation at the hip, not so much at the thigh. 90 degree bend and a bit of an ankle tilt. It's not much. I will say the lower half of the body is a bit limited on articulation. Head goes left and right, but that's kind of it because of the back part of his head. But that all being said, I think he looks really, really good. He does what it needs to to capture that personality. The fact he is that Mighty Mouse character. 
even if the articulation is limited, you'll still get him into some good poses. He will hold a running pose. He will get some good bends, even if there isn't a double bend at the elbow and there isn't ratchets in the leg, but he's so heavy and well proportioned and it's tightness on the friction. He's not going to topple over. I do like it, even if there is no waist rotation, which we can criticize companies for. I've criticized fans toys before, but I can understand it with that backpack hanging off. It's always going to just break and come loose if you did throw in a waist rotation. Accessory wise and for robot mode only, it would seem he just comes with his gun. He doesn't come with many accessories, but his gun that he comes with is not the best looking gun. I think it's very just bland. It's very square fronted. It's probably too inaccurate. It's not his fault. It's just a bit. All right, it's a pistol with a very stumpy front. And that's how he looks holding said pistol. Now the pistol actually goes in on a slot. And I think more companies are doing this these days rather than a pegs in and then it doesn't peg in and it pops out. This has more grooves in the palms that you just slide the gun into and it locks in better. It's not really being held by the hand. It's more being slotted into the base of the palm, which for my money works better. Um, it's not going to droop. If anything, the hand is more there just to just for decoration it's not doing any holding so it's more pegged into the wrist and that's how he looks with his one and only accessory i will just show you something this can happen it did happen to me outside of the box one of his feet or toe can come loose a bit it will peg back in but it could also easily come loose don't worry it's not a defect it's just not the most flushest component on there and it will easily knock loose again it's not a deal breaker if you've got him standing up, the weight will keep it all pegged in, but it's something that can happen. Now, I mentioned as well he comes with an alternative face, so the one he comes with outside of the box is this. And it's quite a placid-looking face, and it's quite a well-sculpted face, lovely blue eyes. I even like the lines around the cheeks. It gives that kind of withered warrior kind of look. So, yeah, that's how he looks. It's very easy to apply. You just pull off the front of it. The hardest part is with there being no or little to no neck rotation, you've got to kind of pry that off from underneath. I would suggest getting some kind of tool to do so, but be careful not to damage his chest to do so. I think I prefer the shouty face more. It really epitomizes the character. Okay, now onto some comparisons. Here he is alongside Fans Toys Dune Rider, their version of a beachcomber in the mini bot scale. Here he is alongside Takara's Bumblebee 2.0 in the masterpiece scale. Different companies and the scale is maybe a little off. I always got the impression Braun was the bigger of the mini bots and Bumblebee was certainly one of the smaller so that possibly works but obviously two different companies at play here. Fans Toys Parkour, their version of Cliff Jumper. I love seeing these two together, these two kind of always spoiling for a fight, real Mighty Mouse style characters. So yeah again that size is probably about right similar to bumblebee was cliff jumper so again this scale probably works takara wheel jack to give a typical masterpiece car bot size uh i've said before i think the car bot size is now a bit outdated because i get the impression wheel jack should be that bit taller still the fact that braun's coming up to his shoulder i feel he should maybe come up to his elbow perhaps but that's how they look together Takara Masterpiece Ironhide. Now that is a good scale. I think that the mini bots coming up to more or less Ironhide's waist is about right. Ironhide was quite a big bot and would easily stand toe to toe with the likes of Soundwave or Megatron. So yeah, that probably works quite well. Remembering Brawn is still a mini bot. And Takara MP44 Optimus Prime. Uh, you really do see how small Brawn is when you put these two together. He's, he's not even a Prime's crotch piece, let alone his waist. Uh, again, this is possibly right. Prime was fairly big, particularly against the minibots, but it shows you how small the minibots can be. But he blends in so well with the G1-inspired characters from Fans Toys or Takara. Okay, let's get Man of Arms transformed up, shall we? <laughs> and here he is in his vehicle mode, and that is a surprisingly big-looking Jeep. He's quite a nice truck, Jeep. He tabs in quite well. I will say the transformation at times is trying to be a bit too clever, I think. I think it's quite an involved transformation for what is a very simple design. And there were steps that I didn't see coming. Folding out the sides of the vehicle are the standing upright legs. So they split apart down the middle and they go to front axle and rear axle which is very clever, but at the same time, why would that split in from, from the legs? It, it, it means the legs are kind of made of two side panels folded in on each other. 
it's not something I would have considered. It's not to say it's inherently bad, but there's a few things that you do. And then the first steps as well, it actually tells you in the instructions to fold away the hip piece. And it's, it's just like, okay, that's not what I expected to be doing when transforming brawn. It doesn't make you think that way, which I suppose is refreshing in a sense. But you do kind of think, why am I doing this? And that's why I feel maybe it's a bit too clever for its own good. But apart from a couple of missteps of the transformation guidance, the booklet that comes with it, the instructions, once it gets there, it tabs in nicely. I've had no tabbing in issues with it. It's very secure, very heavy, very dense. Everything tabs in with good pegs, apart from maybe one bit, which I'll show you in a minute. But that's the end result. And yeah, it's a bit like Warthog Power Glide. When it opens out, it's actually bigger than it has a right to be. It folds out nicely. It's very stocky. He's largely centered around the backpack because that's on the back of the figure. And that's kind of an entire detachable piece where the, the rear of the roof folds out on itself. Other than that, it's mostly a solid backpack piece. But I do like it. <laughs> the only thing is I can't not see Brum in the front of the vehicle when he comes around every time you look at it and that's brum going on his little adventures and now i've seen it now i can't unsee it and neither can you let's get in for a closer look now i'll show you straight away yes he does in fact roll quite nicely rubber tires which is always a nice one for me good ground clearance as well i've stuck the autobot insignia on there he does not come with that but i'm not sure that's centered so i might reapply that but yeah it, this is the bit now also, that's weapon storage as well, which is nice. It tabs underneath. If I take that off a second, this is the panel that folds out from under the roof of the car. And if I get it to kind of that angle, you see it doesn't go completely flush down. So you really do have to push it past two pegs because it folds back down on itself. And you can see it's, it's fighting against other plastic. It's a bit disconcerting. It makes a bit of a crack. It's still, it's still enough ground clearance, but I don't like that looseness and that flexing of plastic. I would rather it folds down with purpose-based hinges. It feels like it's bending back on itself and it's asking to break. Not that you'll see it, but it is a bit worrying. But yeah, he's very good. I like his spare tire on the top. It spins around. Can't do anything else with it. Tire's a good, decent heft. Nice blue tinted windows all the way around, painted on the back. It's a little bit bland, but I suppose the vehicle as a whole is never meant to be exciting. He's more rugged. There's the underside of the vehicle. Even with that big chest piece, he's still got nice ground clearance. Very pleased with that. Doors don't open like they do on some other models, but that's not the end of the world. And yep, there's a Brum face. There's Brum. But overall, I really like the figure. The wing mirrors are just plastic mold on. They're not rubber or anything like that same with the windshield wipers nice chrome alloys rubber tires details for headlights it's got nice designs typical fans toys build it does tab together very well i will say that i was pleasantly surprised how well everything keeps together it doesn't fight you so yeah this has been a bit of a success for at least once everything's transformed up if not the transformation itself now with his other accessory he comes with this the drill piece from that one episode that he had at one time when he was tunneling through. And okay, it's easy enough to apply. He pegs it on and there it is. And it's on Brum's face. And it even rotates. I have to take my word for it. It's a bit stiff, but it does spin around. It is a bit stiff, but it will go. And it looks very chromey, very nice. But what are you going to do with it? Are you going to store it in that mode? I don't know, I kind of feel like this is a topic for another day, but accessories with Transformers are nice when you get them, but they are very much a one and done, and this falls into that category. I also point out that's as much storage as you can do with it as well. You can put the gun on the underside, but this can't go anywhere else, so if you're going to have them in vehicle mode, you're probably going to have that on. Okay, now on to comparisons. Here he is alongside Fans Toys June Rider, their version of Beachcomber in the Minibot scale. Uh, I still have trouble tabbing in that front piece that you'll remember from my review from before. I do like how they look. Nice scale, nice sizing. Um, yeah, that's about right. Similar sort of heft, but same company. And yeah, again, you've got Brum face over here and two little eyes over here. 
And I'm just seeing faces on things. Fans Toys Parkour, their version of a masterpiece cliff jumper. I do love that vehicle mode, that chubby little race car mode. But yeah, seeing these together makes you realize how big Braun actually is. He's quite sizable. When you put them side by side, there's really kind of night and day difference between them. Uh, they're two different vehicles, of course, but yeah, from masterpiece scale, you really do see how small Cliff Jumper is, but that's how they look together. Into Chug scale, we have Rise of the Beast Battle Trap. I do like this alt mode, and again, I think that's possibly a good scale. Maybe that vehicle mode needs to be a bit bigger if it's going to be towing along the likes of a Brawn or whoever, but it actually is quite in keeping when you have them and the previous two comparisons side by side. So yeah, I like how that looks. And for what is a staple now for my comparisons, here he is alongside a masterpiece Sunstreak and a Takara version. You get an idea of a typical car bot scale. And yeah, that's possibly about right. But again, this is not a small, you can see if I put them more or less back to back, that Sunstreak is only that bit longer. Maybe that's right, maybe. They are both masterpiece scale, but different companies. So I've said before, I've said again, that I feel the car bot scale is a little bit outdated and some of these bigger mini bots are starting to show that, but that's how they look together. So what's my final verdict on this hunky bot? Well, it's actually pretty cool. He's actually quite good. The alt mode is surprisingly big, possibly too big for the vehicle he's meant to be. He's quite large, quite square. The transformation has elements of being too clever for its own good, particularly the folding out of the legs into making the side of these. These cascade outwards like that to form either side of that, but then fold back together to make a stockier leg, which then folds out to be a standing leg. Clever, very intuitive, but there were some parts of it that felt like there's a lot of early steps in the instructions that tell you to modify the hips and tuck the hip skirts into the body, unfold the butt flaps. And I just thought, I wouldn't have thought it'd be that hard for a stocky bot to become a stocky Jeep or truck. And it shouldn't be, but okay. A couple of steps were just a little bit odd but not necessarily hard. And I will say it does tab in fairly well, barring a couple of points that I think I've got right. The accessories are an interesting one. I actually want to talk about this another day, so I won't labor too much on it now. His gun does form underneath for a bit of weapon storage in this bit of the back, which as I showed you, it's just a little bit protruding. So if you put the gun there, it has a tendency to drag and then fall. So that's not, brilliant for weapon storage. But then again, this cone. Now, okay, this is part of an episode from the G1 cartoon that I can't remember off the top of my head, but I do remember him tunneling with a drill. So fine, yes, it is something that he has come with and it's something he can use, but unless you're gonna use it in said fashion, what are you gonna do with it? Where's it gonna go? Can't store it anywhere other than that, so he's not going to use it in robot mode, I don't think. And it's reenacting one scene from one episode nearly 40 years ago. So accessories, I think there's a real argument for, okay, are these accessories needed? They need a gun, they need a change of face, they need something to add something to the dynamic of the figure, but if it's for a nicety, something that you can do to reenact one thing, unless that's a really important part of a character's development, then fine. I actually would have thought another of Megatron's fusion cannon to come with him, because that's quite iconic. I would actually thought a shattered shoulder, maybe from 1986, who knows? That's what we remember him for. But is this cone what we remember for Braun? Is this an accessory we desperately need? I'm not saying it's not nice, it even rotates on a point. It's just, okay, I've got it. Now what do I do with it? But that grumbling out the way, rubber tires, good heft, good tabbing in, nice size. Yeah, I've, after my initial iffiness with Fans Toys Mini Bots, Warthog, I was actually quite impressed with this and Cliff Jumper before. So maybe Fans Toys have started to win me back with their Mini Bots, certainly ones that I like from time to time. But this is quite good. I love the weight to it. I think the robot mode really does capture the characteristics of the character so well. He really is just jumping out the screen and it doesn't affect 
the bot mode too much. It doesn't compromise anything. So I think it's a good trade-off. If you can get this figure cheap or cheapish, mini bots aren't that expensive because they're not huge, then this is a good recommendation from me. There is a lot of talk of whether the Studio Series version is better. I haven't handled it, but a lot of people say that's a brilliant figure, so really it depends on what range you're after. Do you want a chug version? Do you want an MP version? I don't think you can go wrong either way. I still can't get over that Brum face though. And based on this, I give this figure four Rodimus Star badges. It's, yeah, it's quite cool. It's a good price, it's good heft, he fits into the collection very nicely. He has that Mighty Mouse feel about him. A couple of things to stop him being a perfect figure. If you're a fan of the character, and certainly if you're into the MP range, if you're in the fans toys range, then this is a must really for you. There's limited offerings on the market that really catches a G1 broad. Again, if you want the Studio Series version, fine. I understand that's pretty good. But apart from maybe a bit of a iffy or somewhat forgettable accessory, he does everything right that he needs to. He really captures that masterpiece version. I love his heft to him, real Mighty Mouse feel. So it is a recommendation from me. And there we go, that is my review of Fanstoy's FT42 Hunk, their version of a masterpiece brawn. I'll stick some photos up at the end. Thanks for watching, and as always, I will see you on the next one.